All right, now to show you the real power of Q, I have to show you a couple more operators. These are a little bit more sophisticated, but they're not that tricky. Right? The first operator is weighted average function. It's what you'd guess. You put a, a list on the right, and you say average that according to the weights on the left. All right, so there's the weighted average. It happens to be 20 because I jiggered the numbers so it would be. All right, so compute the weighted average of the list on the right using the weights on the left. And now we get to an operator that's, as far as I know, unique to Q. It's called X bar. No, that's not where you go after the session and after your work day. It's an operator that says X bar. Well, let me just show you how this works. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 21. Uh, let's say we're going to do x bar 5. All right. So it takes a list on the right, and it takes an atom or a scalar on the left, and it says, I want you to reduce every number on the right to the left endpoint of the interval of the multiple of 5 that it sits in. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 all sit in the interval 0 to 5, but you don't include the 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 all get mapped to 0 because they sit in the interval 0 to 4, not including 5. 5 sits in the interval 5 to 10, not including 10. 10 and 11 sit in the interval 10 to 15, not including 15. And 21 sits in the interval 20 to 25. Or another way to say this, it's the largest multiple of 5 that does not exceed the number on the right. That was a lot easier, but it's not so obvious what it means. All right, now this function is really useful for grouping. Because if you think about how grouping works in SQL or QSQL, basically it says, I have a column or columns I'm going to group by. I group, which means take all the values in that column that are the same, and that constitutes one group. Now, all the values that are the same to a different value, that constitutes another group. So what you want when you group is a function or values that map multiple values to the same value. Then they will be grouped into the same group. X bar does just that. It maps 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 into 0, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 7.5, for that matter, into 5, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So X bar is very useful for grouping if you want to group by intervals, right? Especially if they're time intervals. So for example, when might I want to group by time intervals? Oh, I don't know. Let's say I have a trade table. And my times happen to be in milliseconds, right? Times are milliseconds. They're kind of milliseconds. And suppose I wanted, I don't know, a traditional thing that people want in, in trading worlds is they said, you know what? I want to know the bucketed volume weighted average price bucketed by, say, 100 millisecond intervals. Right? That is one of the holy grails in the equity trading world to say, what's the volume weighted average price in each interval? Because then you can say, OK, that volume weighted average price essentially is a stand-in for what the, the price was in that interval. Now we can do that interval by interval and get a better feel of how the thing's actually moving rather than tick by tick data. So can we do that? Yes, we can. And now we'll do the coolest example of the trades table. Often, when you're back testing a trading strategy, you want to know what is the maximum idealized profit, or conversely, the maximum drawdown, or in layman's terms, how much could I have made if I had gone into DeLorean and brought the Wall Street Journal from the future back, and I knew exactly what every trade was going to be, and I bought at the lowest price and sold at the highest price after. Not quite as simple as that, but you get the idea. Or conversely, what if I had bought at the absolute highest price and sold at the worst time after, right? Maximum idealized profit or draw, maximum drawdown. This is one of the holy grails of trading analysis. So how would we do that? Certainly, this has to be more than a line of code. Well, no, it's not. So let's think about this for a second. The first insight is, 
Let's do maximize idealized profit, right? The first insight is if we didn't buy at a local minimum, then it can't possibly be the optimum answer. Because if you didn't buy the local minimum, you just get in your time machine and go back to where the local minimum was and buy there and you'll have a better profit. So the first insight is any potential solution has to have the buy at a local minimum. All right. So remember, we have this trades table and the, tra the time does run forward in uh, trades table at least. And so if we were thinking about doing a select from this query, we would probably want to have something like select and we'd have mins of price. Now let's say we're going to just do this uh, where sim equals backtick AAPM. Let's just do it for Apple to start with. So if we're running across our trades table, then we want the cumulative minimum because that's the only possible candidates for a buy, sell, pair that could be the ones corresponding to the maximum idealized profit. Wherever we're started, if it's not the lowest, then go to the lowest. All right, up to that point. Now, as we're going across the table, we could say, well, all right, so we're, we're going, remember these are columns, so we're, we're going along the columns, which is going down time. If we take the current price, as we're going down the column, remember these are in time order, and we subtract the mins up to that point, then up to that point in the table, that's probably the best we could do, right? We could have bought at the min and sold where we are, except that, well, there's lots of different potential pairs of doing this, right? As we go across the table, we could have bought at the min up to that point and sold at that point, or we could bought at the, buy at the min and sold at a later point. Remember the sell always has to happen after the buy. So if we say maximize that, we're done. Then you say, no way, way. This is a Zen of Q question. You have to sit and contemplate this until you convince yourself that really this is the answer. And you can actually check it. Uh, the maximum idealized profit in, in our trading table is 3% of the price of Apple because that's how I uh, arrange the prices to be, right? They go from the starting price to 3% more. We have 10 million selections, so we actually hit both endpoints. And that's, in fact, 3% of the price of Apple. So that is a very, very powerful statement, right? This is what I like to call the Zen of Q. It's like the Fibonacci. It's like the newton raphson It's like, uh, well, it's like this. You look at the solution and you realize, that's it? You ask yourself, what's missing? And the answer is, what's missing is all the unnecessary accoutrements of traditional programming would just get in the way of solving the problem. That's what's missing.